So welcome, welcome to our first attendees, welcome to our webinars from the series of subject webinars. And um, today we are going to talk, uh, the umbrella topic for today is studying political science and economics in Germany, very interesting topic. And my name is Georgi, and today I will be with you co-hosting uh, slash co-moderating for the webinar. And you see that I'm not alone. As usually during the subject webinars, we have some guests and they will be talking about um, some specific programs uh, from German universities. And I'll, I will introduce them shortly. But before I do that, uh, small technical details for the new buys. For those who do not know yet, you can see the Q&A button in the bottom part of your Zoom interface. This is the main communication line, let's call it like that, between you and us. So you can send in your questions there. You can already start doing that right now, uh, basically, and until the end of the webinar. So it is always open and you, send in, you can send in your questions. And I will monitor it. I will see what are the questions. And if I do not ask for your question immediately, it doesn't mean that I ignore you. Not at all. I'm just leaving it for uh, for the for our speakers. So when they finalize with their presentations, we'll have live Q&A session where they will be answering your questions uh, directly. So that's why you should stay tuned. Uh, regarding the chat, you cannot use the chat, unfortunately, but uh, I would like to suggest you to keep an eye on the chat because they will be sending some links or some maybe contact details. So keep an eye on the chat. There will be some interesting information shared for you. All right. So that's all from my side. Now let me make a short presentation and then we will jump into um, our presentations, key presentations for today. As you can see from the webinar agenda, we'll have three programs presented today from two German universities. The first uh, will be Felipe Del Molar Noyar, who will be talking about um, Master of Arts program, two Master of Arts programs, first in, in intercultural communication and European studies, and second will be human rights studies in politics, law, and society. And Felipe is from uh, Fulda University of Applied Sciences. And then we have a guest from University of Potsdam, and Ms. Sophie Wagner, who will be talking about Master of Science level program in economic policy and quantitative methods. So before we jump into this interesting part, let me tell you some things about who is behind the webinar. So it is my German university. So we are a Germany's largest database of English taught study programs. When you go to our website, you will be able to find over 2,400 uh, programs, which are mostly taught in English. And uh, it's not only master levels programs, but also bachelor levels programs as well. And on the left hand side, you can see a small demo version of our study finder and you can you can see that we have some short courses and language courses also listed in our database. Uh, to put it shortly, uh, our main goal and main aim is to help international students like you on their way towards studying in Germany. And one of the ways of doing that is exactly through our study finder. So you can, as I said, you can see the short version right now, but when you go to our website and on the top left corner, you click on study finder, you'll be able to see the larger version of study finder with all of its filters. So for example, you want to find a master's program in uh, Berlin, let's say, uh, and uh, you want to have a program which is not um, the directed, uh, where applications are not processed by UniAssist, and you want to have, you have a particular score in IELTS and you want to find programs ba based on IELTS. So all these things you can control for, and there are much more things uh, you can do uh, with the filters, which makes your search much more efficient and effective, if you ask me. So that's why I would suggest you to, uh, make good use of uh, our study finder. The second way of helping you is through writing up articles. Right now, we have more than 100 comprehensive articles on various, various topics. It can be, for example, if you want to know how you should structure your letter of motivation for German universities, or uh, you are interested in, in what is Hochschulstart, or fees and costs, or uh, scholarships in Germany, etc., etc. You can find all articles written on all these topics. On the left-hand side, you can see a navigator bar, and by clicking on these topics, you can see various articles written on them. This is another way of helping you. And I would also strongly suggest you to keep an eye on that because it's uh, updated uh, on a weekly basis, actually. And then uh, the last but not least is our uh, webinars. So we have approximately 
actually over 150 webinars per year. Again, the topics are different. It can be uni-assist topic, it can be visa topic, it can be general studying in Germany topic or subject webinar topics, for example, like the one that we are having today, political science, economics, it can be also business administration, it can be physics, it can be biology, etc., etc. So all already uh, planned webinars you can find on our webinar section in our on our website and you can sign up for all these webinars for free of course and i would also suggest you to create an account if you have not done so yet to create an account on our uh, website which is also absolutely for free this will make uh, you this will unlock all the options that our website is able to offer you actually and regarding our team so our team we are based in hamburg in germany but we are all over germany and also in different countries around the world for example we have our colleagues who are based in china we have colleagues who are based in spain etc cetera, etc cetera. and that's why we are counseling also in different languages actually ranging from english even to georgian all right, now about there are two databases that I would like you to know about. So the, for those who might be interested in also or mainly in English in uh, German taught study programs, also I would like to suggest you to check out Hochschule Kompass, which might be interesting for you. But for those who are more into English taught study programs, and my guess would be that the most of you, if not all of you are, uh, then of course, uh, my German university and our study finder should be your stop. Definitely, you can see that we have over 140 degree programs for political science and economics listed there, and both on bachelor level and master's level, and most of them are in English only. And by English only, it means that you do not need any knowledge of German to study on these programs. Of course, uh, knowing German in Germany, it's a very good idea to put it so, but yeah, for these uh, particular programs, you might not need uh, knowledge of German. Uh, also, for those who do not know what to expect when it comes to studying political science or economics in Germany, by the way, this is these are the topics by which uh, that I came to Germany with, actually, and when I did my master's, so I'm also very familiar with that. And when you want, for example, you don't know what to expect, uh, I would also suggest you to, uh, to check out our, our uh, subject pages, for example, on political science and economics, and then you will be able to find out what are the rankings of universities, for example, that are offering these type of programs? What, what is the tuition fee range that you should expect when it comes to studying these programs in Germany, et cetera, et cetera. So you can find all this information on the subject pages and I will also put the links in the chat uh, so that you familiarize yourself with a bigger picture. Uh, yes, of course, uh, it's always, uh, not, uh, it's important to look for the right university profile and study program and uh, my suggestion would be just uh, don't be guided by only one uh, metric for example quantitative metrics like rankings uh, because yeah many German universities actually are not mentioned listed on uh, international various well-known international rankings because of some reasons or maybe rankings taken into account because yeah you know weighting of the rankings are dif is different and they may might take into account those details that are not actually interesting for you or important for you that's why uh, only taking into account rankings only taking into account uh, city names will will be the will result in you missing out many most of many of the opportunities that might be actually good for you that's why don't do that uh, operationalize more things and uh, also what i would like you to know about is that two about two types of universities in germany so the first type by the way both of them are present now uh, actually so the one type is universität type of university and on our study finder, for example, you can go and find programs uh, offered in, by, in political science and economics offered by this type of university exactly. And the second type of university is University of Applied Sciences. In German, it can have also, you can see some different names. And yeah, on our study finder, you can also control for that, searching for programs in these disciplines offered by this type of university. So probably, and I'm almost sure that in your countries, you don't have this difference. And that's why maybe you're asking now, should I be worried about what is it about? So uh, to put it shortly again, not to dig much deep into this topic, uh, I would say that the key, the takeaway for now should be the focus. So usually in general, when it comes to universität type of university, the focus is more on research and theory. And in case of university applied sciences, usually the focus is on more application and practice. Again, this is gen general information. And if you are more interested into further differences, please drop, drop me an email and I will try my best to explain all the details. And last but not least, 
When you're searching for study programs, once again, uh, in addition to being flexible with your filters, be flexible also uh, with the wordings. So you, you might find various programs if you change the bit wordings and actually the curriculums might be very similar. So uh, this will increase your chances that you have not missed any important program that is that is Germany is available to offer you. All right, so we are with that moving to our uh, first speaker. Uh, Felipe from uh, Fulda University of Applied Sciences. And as I said, he will be talking about, he will present two programs, master's uh, level programs in intercultural communication and European studies. And then he will talk about human rights studies in politics, law and society. And you can see where Fulda is located on the map, quite geographically central location, I would say. And you can see, you can also see some uh, important cities around. All right. With that, I'm stopping my screen share and handing it over to Felipe. Thank you, Georgie, for that nice introduction. Actually, Fulda is really in the center of Germany and it's around one hour by train from Frankfurt. Um, so thank you for showing also uh, where it is. I'm just going to quickly share my screen and I hope you can see my presentation. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Felipe Del Moral Neuer. I'm the coordinator of international affairs uh, at the University of Applied Sciences in Fulda, Germany. And today I want to introduce to you our international master programs, um, Intercultural Communication European Studies, short ICEOS, and Human Rights Studies in Politics, Law and Society, MARS, at the Faculty of Social and Cultural Sciences. Um, before we have a look at what our master programs are about, I want to give a quick introduction uh, to our university and faculty of social and cultural sciences. Our university is generally characterized by modern demand oriented formats and a personal atmosphere. Uh, at the same time, we are a strong research university with independent doctoral rights. And that means you can enter a PhD program here as well. Uh, so we are one of the a few exceptions, as Georgie already mentioned. Uh, our university has eight departments and uh, 60 study programs, and approximately 11,000 students are enrolled right now. And our Department of Social and Cultural Sciences has, in general, a very strong international orientation where students study social science bachelor's and master degree programs and even social law. Uh, and our research projects aim to educate international students about current issues through projects and themed events. And uh, we are collaborative, collaboratively uh, establishing a meeting place in Fulda. For example, this semester, we just held our annual autumn school in which professors, doctoral students, and students from different countries work in groups on the topic of mobilities and human rights. And additionally, we kicked off our annual Model United Nations simulation with our partners from Canada and Poland. Uh, the Center of Intercultural European Studies, called Sinteus, uh, researches uh, developments and issues of high academic and social significance in the present and the foreseeable future. I've attached the links in the PowerPoint presentation, and I hope that you can access this somehow. Um, I hope that Georgie can make that possible for you. Um, right, let's have a look at the master programs, Mars and Ikeos. Um, to get a rough overview first, both master programs are taught in an international environment and qualify for working in an international setting in an interdisciplinary fashion. Uh, in Mars, we focus on the institutionalization or, and implementation of human rights. Um, we cover national and regional and global developments of human rights with a legal, political, and sociological perspective. In ICAOS, we have a strong European focus. Uh, European integration is a topic, understanding of organizational structures, and uh, especially also um, we're putting emphasis on communication skills. So let's have a look at Mars. I have attached here the timetable. And as I already said, Mars is a social science-based and interdisciplinary graduate program. 
that looks at human rights issues from many, many perspectives. And during their first year, students will examine the history, development of human rights. Additionally, students acquire substantial expertise in social sciences methodology and legal argumentation. Uh, human rights will be related to social change, cross-cultural interaction, and communication. And the second year starts with a 10-week internship that can be completed in Germany or abroad. And afterwards, students specialize in two of very interesting areas. Uh, the first one is business and work in human rights, migration and human rights, or digital communication and human rights. Um, the cross-study section right uh, on top, uh, right below, sorry, um, will bring participants together uh, with students from other graduate programs and foreign languages can be studied throughout the program. Masters aimed at German and international graduates with a first degree in social sciences, politics, law, communication, philosophy, social work, and economics. The program consists of 11 modules and the master thesis is written in the fourth semester. Uh, which will be supervised by two members of the department and students can work on research topic developed during their studies or during their internship. And the academic title uh, is Master of Arts and uh, it is awarded to you after uh, finishing all the modules successfully. As of now, the study program Mass is bilingual, so German and English. However, we will put in place a so-called English study track next year, starting in the winter semester of 2023, 2024, um, in which students can study the program only in English. So there is a path for you uh, to choose uh, only English speaking seminars uh, from next year on. Um, and the aforementioned internship is a great way to advance your skill set in areas um, you will apply after your graduation and we give you an, inter an additional month during the semester break uh, to have your internship. So we are looking at a three month period during your studies, which you can only devote to your internship. And the destination of our field trips are where you would expect them to be. Uh, we visit institutions, organizations and courts which are directly connected to uh, the European Union, European integration or human rights um, in the European Union. And this is our new cohort of Mars students who have started in September. Uh, we started with 43 students and um, three quarter actually are international students this time. Um, and now let's go to the second master, um, ICEOS, Intercultural Communication and European Studies. Um, it is also an international and bilingual interdisciplinary program that prepares university graduates uh, for a career in supranational and national organizations with a strong international, primarily uh, European focus. And this career field requires the development of communication skills that, that um, transcend linguistic and cultural borders. Uh, the program provides students um, with a thorough understanding of organizational structures and the background and perspectives of European integration and the program teaches the theories of intercultural communication, ethnography at the, meta, at the method of analyzing cultural phenomena and the approaches of um, awareness and behavioral training. And students have also the opportunity to develop and strengthening foreign languages. Uh, this is um, a specific uh, emphasis on this program. And they learn about the history of the European integration process, institutions and decision-making processes inside of the European Union, European policy areas, European law, and the effects of globalization and international corporations. Uh, students are also introduced uh, to social empirical research methods and gain teamwork experience in intercultural work settings. Um, a cross-disciplinary module enhances the interdisciplinary nature of the program and offers different topics um, to choose from. ICIRS is aimed at German and international graduates who hold a first degree in social sciences, cultural studies, languages, especially uh, law or the humanities. 
and 50% of the classes are taught in English and the other half is taught in German. And the standard program duration is four semesters as in Mars. Uh, this, these are two years and it includes a mandatory internship as well. And the internship takes place after the second semester as well and can be undertaken at an organization, institution, public authority or company that has strong international ties or is involved in matters of intercultural communication, European integration and international cooperation. And lastly, this is Ilka Gersemann. She is the program coordinator of uh, ICAOS, of the, uh, of the master program I have just introduced. Uh, and please contact her if you have any questions. And here is my, uh, my, my details. Uh, you can contact me anytime uh, under this email and phone number. And Georgie, I think this was my part. Um, I will hand back to you. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much, Felipe. I just also quickly put uh, your email in the chat, just for all that students can see. Thank you very much for a very nice introduction, uh, very nice presentation of both programs. And with that, we can move now uh, to our next presentation. And I will quickly share with you a screen once again and introduce once again Sophie Wagner from University of Potsdam. And now we are moving to the north and eastern from Fulda, I would say. <laughs> so, and we will talk about Master of Science level program in economic policy and quantitative methods. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And uh, Sophie, the floor is yours. Yeah, so I will quickly share my screen and hope everyone can see my presentation. Yes. Perfect. My name is Sophie Wagner. I work at the University of Potsdam as an assistant researcher at the Chair of Empirical Economics. And I'm also the program assistant for our master program called Economic Policy and Quantitative Methods. Um, quickly about the University of Potsdam. Um, it is a somewhat uh, young university with a very good reputation. Uh, we have three campuses that are distributed over the city of Potsdam and the campus that um, the economics department is at is called Gripnitzsee. It is very close to the center of both Potsdam and actually also to Berlin. So you can reach Berlin uh, via public transport, I think, uh, within 15 minutes, which is very nice. Now, um, some facts about our program. As I said, the name is Economic Policy and Quantitative Methods. So those are both the focuses of uh, the master program that you can choose between. Um, it is a Master of Science program. This will be the academic title that you will reach at the end. The standard period is also four semesters, so two years. And you have to collect uh, 120 credit points to complete the degree. Um, actually, all courses are taught in English, completely in English, so um, we have a very diverse um, student body, actually the, the cohort this semester, I think we have about 25 students, and I think 15 of those are about um, international students. Uh, we start with a new cohort every winter semester, and you can apply until June 1st every year. The master program is um, hosted by the Center of Economic Policy Analysis. So the program is embedded in a very lively research environment. Um, you have the opportunity to do an internship uh, with our partnering institutions. Um, you have a lot of um, you have access to a lot of events, for example, talks with researchers and politicians and other interesting um, econom econom economists. Um, so, yeah, you can have a very um, research-focused um, master program. Uh, now, I want to give you five reasons to apply. First, um, you're able to specialize in economic policy or quantitative methods. So if this is your interest, then this is really the place to be. Um, we have an excellent student-staff uh, ratio. Uh, so you will definitely get to know our professors and instructors, uh, which is very nice. 
you have the opportunity to get a research assistant position either at uh, with us at the University of Potsdam at one of the chairs or um, at one of our partnering institutions. Um, you have access to um, a very good internship program, as I said, through the uh, Center of Economic Policy Analysis, and you can also um, partake in selected PhD courses that are provided by the Berlin School of Economics. Mm, this is an overview of all the modules and lectures. Of course, this is much too detailed to uh, go over um, right now. Uh, I do want to highlight we have some mandatory courses, um, microeconometrics, microeconomics, and macroeconomics, and of course, a master thesis that you will complete at the end um, in your fourth semester. And then we have a large variety of economic policy lectures, such as political econo economy, urban economics, health economics, behavioral economics, and much more. And we have also a large variety covering quantitative methods, such as policy evaluation, machine learning, experimental methods, time series analysis, and much more. And then we have some electives. Um, you can choose to do an internship, but it is not mandatory in this program. So you're, you're free to choose if you would like to do that or not. Um, further, we have a lot of international um, partnerships, first with our, our Erasmus partnerships with a lot of universities. And then we have some more uh, partnerships, for example, with the Duke University at the United States, um, but also others. So if you're interested in doing a semester abroad, you're very welcome to do that. We have a mentoring program for new students that are new to Potsdam or to the University of Potsdam to help you get started and to help you get comfortable. Uh, we match in this program new students with one of the students from the previous cohorts, and they will help you on an eye to eye level to get started with your studies. So this is definitely a nice um, opportunity for international students who are new to Germany, maybe, or new to Potsdam. Now, what are the application requirements? Um, this is a master degree program, so you have to have completed a bachelor degree program or an equivalent academic degree in economics or a related field. Um, in this program, you have to have completed 60 credit points in economics, and out of those, at least 18 in statistics, econometrics, or mathematics. You have to prove your proficiency in English, at least C1 level. And we have a complete and detailed list of which certificates are accepted on our website. Um, I will put the website in the chat, I think. I don't know, I will try now. Um, you can check that out there. We have um, very detailed instructions there. And also required is a motivation letter telling us why you want to study uh, economic policy and quantitative methods, what previous knowledge you have, and what you think or why you think um, economic policy is important um, in today's times. Um, the deadline, as I said, for application is June 1st, and you can apply through the, the, the portal uh, UniAssist. Mm. This is our EPQM team on the left, on the top left hand side, you see the head of the program, Professor Caliendo, who is also the chair of empirical economics. On the top right hand side, you see our student advisor, Professor Brutte, who is the chair of economics. Uh, on the bottom left hand side, you see me and on the bottom right hand side, you see Ricardo Stremlo, who is in charge of organizational and administrative questions. I will share the details of the contact information in a minute. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know now or later. If you want to drop us an email, um, you can yeah, email us either under apqm at unipotsdam.de or you can ask Ricardo Stremlo if you have any organizational um, questions. And yeah, I think other than that, that's, that's it for me. I also have some more links if you're interested, but yeah, I think I will hand over to Georgie. Yeah, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot, Sophie, for another very nice presentation, very clear. And with that, we can move already to our live Q&A session. Actually, there are some questions that we can 
address. Uh, so uh, first question uh, is, um, hello, I wanted to ask, is it possible to apply to multiple programs at one university? Does it have any downsides? Thank you. Uh, I think, Felipe, maybe this is more question to you because you present two programs. So is it possible to apply to both of the programs and will be any problem with that? It is certainly possible to apply for many programs at our university. Um, I believe in the end, you have to choose one program to um, actually enroll. Um, however, there is always a chance to um, have two degrees at the same time. But this is like a very um, personal matter and our admission office, and I can share the link later, will definitely answer these questions if you want to go for a two-way study program. But if you want the possibility to choose after you have received admission, it's definitely possible to apply for more than one. Degree. Okay, great. Yeah. That's clear. Thanks a lot, Felipe. Next question, I would say it's to both of you. Um, are these consecutive programs or not? Um, so I see the nodings from both of you. Yeah, maybe uh, Sophie, you could start first and then Felipe. Uh, yes, this is a master degree program, so a graduate program. So you have to have completed a bachelor degree or a similar academic degree beforehand. Yeah. Great, thanks. And Felipe? Yeah, um, I, I don't want to um, take so much time, but uh, if um, the question is um, a consecutive program, um, for many bachelor students at our faculty who do bachelor degrees, it can be kind of a consecutive program for them because we have similar subjects in the bachelor and you can advance in the master programs. But for students who are not at Fulda University right now, it is um, a program which is very interdisciplinary mm -hmm. and um, therefore is not really consecutive in that, in that way. Okay, so um, to reformulate maybe this question, to make it clear, uh, answers also. So for example, if I studied, let's say engineering, can I still apply for this program or it will, it will not be possible or it should be related at least somehow to human rights, to international relations or stuff like that? Exactly. Uh, since it is interdisciplinary, uh, we welcome students from many, many uh, yeah. fields. Mm -hmm. And we even have uh, students from health sciences Okay. Who want to actually um, advance in um, human rights issues related to health and and we welcome these students as well it doesn't have to be uh, kind of a one way where you only have political and sociology background mm -hmm. yes oh, great yeah. it's clear thank you good to know thanks a lot uh, next question is do you only focus on european authors readings for seminars or yeah they are also from other countries as well, works from other countries? Good question. <laughs> uh, maybe, Sophie, would you like to say something? Um, so I can say that we focus on, yeah, international research in general. So we also read uh, authors from, um, yeah, from all continents, basically. Okay, yes. that's good. <laughs> Great, and Felipe? Uh, we do the same. Um, uh, and I wanted to add that, uh, we usually have one to three professors and many, many lecturers who come from many different places. Uh, and, we, uh, and we encourage them actually to uh, put their research into our seminars. And uh, this is how we are trying to uh, include um, authors from all over the world. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Then Felipe is a question to you. Uh, is your pro programs maybe the boss of them, are they research heavy? This is a question. So what we understand as heavy, what this person understands, it's a, another matter, but anyways, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so our program is um, research heavy in two ways. So we read a lot of research and study the theory that we, uh, what we can learn from research that's already out there. And we also learn to um, actually do research ourselves so we're equipped uh, we equip students to to do their own research and to yeah start their academic degree in that way so yes research heavy yeah <laughs> great and Felipe uh, our master programs are research heavy as well I just wanted to add that it's research heavy in one specific area and it's in um, qualitative social research so we are focusing on 
um, analyzing interviews, analyzing um, kind of qualitative methods where we jump into um, a person to person science. Um, our focus is not so much in quantitative analysis, um, mm -hmm. but in qualitative analysis, it is kind of research heavy, but it's also fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure, <laughs> it will be. So guys, if you want to combine qualitative and quantitative, you should, have, uh, you should spend one semester there, one semester there. <laughs> so it will be a nice option to balance. <laughs> Great. Uh, hello, do you have university journal, journal to contribute to or maybe co-author with the professors? Is there any opportunity for that? Um, Felipe, would you like to add something to that? Yeah, can you just repeat the question? I'm just so Is there any university journal that students can write a research and then this research can be published in this university journal? Or is it an opportunity to do a work with a professor together with a professor, a paper, write a paper? Yes, we have these collaborations. Um, we have kind of um, an international scholarship fund where we invite foreign professors and they do a research project with their students and they're going to publish this as, mm -hmm. as well. So yes, we have this opportunity. That's, that's good to know. That's good. And Sophie, would you like to add something to that? Um, so I think we, we definitely have a research assistant position. So it's very common for students to work with professors on their research and also write papers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm not sure if the University of Potsdam has a specific journal for students. Mm -hmm. But we have the a discussion paper series of the CEPA um, center, but that's usually for PhD students. So, um, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. That's good to know still things. Thanks. So Georgie, can I just add uh, one thing? Um, sorry. Um, I, I mentioned uh, our autumn school where we discussed uh, human rights issues and um, students are actually encouraged to, um, next to the uh, PhD candidates and professors to um, tell about their topics and have a presentation. So we kind of encourage also uh, uh, undergraduate and graduate students to actually get involved into research and um, get their ideas out in these contexts, like many, many days of um, yeah, pre great. presentations. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And one thing also that Sophie mentioned, I also want to underline this as a former student in the same uh, field. So it's always nice in Germany, an no, opportunity to do this kind of student assistantships where you can in every university do that and work with professors. In addition to earning some money, which is always good, you can also earn some experience and which is always great. I mean, yeah, this is a really nice uh, practice that we have here. So next question, if I'm not able to find internship, exactly, this is for Felipe, because exactly was for Felipe, I, if I'm not able to find it in the third semester, is it possible to do it earlier or later? Okay, very good question. And um, yes, it is possible. We try to have our curriculum as flexible as possible. We give you this month, uh, this extra month between the second and the third semester. So you have uh, three months of um, time to do your internship. However, if there are life circumstances or you just don't get an internship or you have the opportunity to do it at another time, uh, you are more than welcome to do that. There's also a winter break or like, let's say a spring break. And um, uh, you can also kind of separate your internship into two parts. We're going to make it possible. Yeah. Okay, that's that's really cool to know. And now question for uh, Sophie. My BA is in international relations, but I had economics as minor. Can I apply? Um, definitely welcome to apply as long as you have um, 60 credit points in economics and out of those 18 in statistic mathematics or um, mm -hmm. yeah, applied econometrics. Oh, yeah, that is a really clear, uh, clear number. Exactly, of exactly. So it has to have a certain amount of uh, economics uh, credit points. But other than that, um, definitely mm -hmm. very welcome to apply. Yes. Great. Thanks a lot. And um, the next question is regarding the application procedure. Is application via UniAssist? I remember that Sophie mentioned ex explicitly UniAssist application. And in case of um, uh, Fulda, both programs were UniAssist or it was directly? UniAssist. Both are UniAssist. Okay, so all three programs are via UniAssist. For those who don't know what is UniAssist, it is first, it's not a university. <laughs> and you can see in the chat what it is about. Um, I put in the link and just shortly, it, it is usually uh, some programs use UniAssist to process their applications via uh, this service. It's like a bridge between you and the program. More you can find on the link uh, down below in the chat. 
Uh, how long should the letter of motivation be? Thanks. Um, Sophie, would you like to add something to that? Uh, yes. So it should be a maximum of two pages. And mm -hmm. there's also some uh, more instructions on our website um, about uh, what two pages mean. So how many letters? So of course, two pages can be long or uh, short, depending on the size of the, <laughs> of the letters. <laughs> um, exactly. And also about what you should, what uh, questions you should answer and so on. So you should check out our website for that. But maximum okay. of two pages. Maximum of two pages. And Felipe, um, is it a must to send letter of motivation? Uh, it is an additional plus, actually. Uh, our, admission, our admission office likes to have uh, a maximum of, of two pages where, where students can just outline their motivation. Uh, but they are kind of free to um, design it in their own way, uh, mm -hmm. but not more than two pages. Yeah. Yes, great. So mo letter motivation question is quite a frequent one, usually, because students are sometimes confused. So also you can find some information because I wrote also some articles because of that, because of the confusion regarding letter of motivation writing. You can check guys uh, there in the chat. There are some links. And yeah, if you find information that statement of purpose, if you know this as a statement of purpose, actually it is the same thing. So don't be worry. Uh, don't worry about different wording. So that's not our personal statement that usually the same. Okay, how many students are there per cohort? This is a good question. Let me ask it also, add my question to that also maybe. So is there any uh, non-local admission restriction uh, that you have? Do you accept any particular number of students and it's open? I think in German it's called numerous clauses, something like that. So is do you have this or not? <laughs> and how many students are there maximum. Sophie, let's start with you. Um, so this year we have a cohort of 25 students starting. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a numerous clauses um, mm -hmm. and I think we accept a maximum of 30 students, 20 to 30 students, yes, mm -hmm. every year. That's clear. Thank you. And Felipe? For MARS, uh, which I'm coordinating, we don't have a numerous clauses mm -hmm. and um, we have a little bit of a uh, we can shift our um, the amount of students. Uh, we started with 43 students uh, this year, and um, it's usually around this uh, number. Um, but we do not actually have a restriction. And okay. for Ikeos, um, let me maybe get back to you in a second. I need to research this right now um, since I'm not the coordinator there. OK, yeah. great. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Anyways, that's good to know. Uh, next question is, should I apply now and secure my seat? So in other words, if I apply earlier, does it increase my chances <laughs> to getting into the program? And, until Felipe is searching, let's start with Sophie. Um, unfortunately, uh, our program is not uh, first come, first serve. <laughs> so <laughs> you're welcome to apply until June 1st. And then we consider all applications um, and go through them. So... Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> if you apply today, it doesn't mean that you'll definitely get Exactly. Just because you're the first one does unfortunately not mean that uh, you're the first one okay. to secure. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good to know. And Felipe, uh, how is it in your case? Yeah. Um, we have a one date where the applications are starting and it's definitely not first come, first serve. Uh, <laughs> we, we will look, we will gather the applications and then uh, look at everyone. Yeah. Um, and regarding the Ikeos, um, um, there is a restriction in number. They are not uh, having more students than 30, but uh -huh. I cannot find anomalous clauses. Yeah. So the restriction of students is okay. there, but not anomalous clauses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, then let's move to the next question. Are these programs for summer or winter intake, or you have both intakes? Uh, Felipe? Uh, they both start in the winter intake. And no summer intakes? No. Okay. And, and in case yeah. of uh, Potsdam? We also start in the winter semester. Yes. So winter is our lovely semester to start always. Uh, then next question is, if I complete my bachelor's in the US and come to Germany for my master's, will my credits be transferred fully or does it have a specific country requirements? Good question. Um, Sophie, would you like to start? Unfortunately, I can't tell you if your credits will be transferred fully or let me say I don't I don't know what transferred fully means in this case so we will 
um, consider your bachelor's degree and all the courses that you took and um, see what what the content of these courses were and then see if these courses match our requirements and then mm -hmm. for the master's degree so mm -hmm. definitely a bachelor's degree from the u.s counts as a bachelor degree and then we see if the requirements are fulfilled for our master's degree yeah Good. I can fully support what Sophie just said. This is the case uh, with us as well. But I think also that Uni Assist is uh, responsible for kind of transferring um, and um, trying to uh, yeah, transfer uh, your grades from the US into the German grade system. So they will actually uh, do this on our behalf, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and from my side, just to add, on UniAssis, you can find some, whether there are any country-specific requirements usually, but in case of the UA, I, I would also suggest you to check Anabin first, if you would like to know for you, for yourself. Uh, so you can see if your university and your program is H+, then it will be uh, recognized for sure, your bachelor, and you can easily continue uh, to your master's. If it's H-, uh, your bachelor will not be counted. If it's H+, plus H-, minus, then it's the question of discussion. It might be counted, might not. So it depends on some issues. So yeah, you can check it on also on Anabin. You can uh, find Anabin uh, article also on our website if you do not know what is it about. Next question. Will we learn programs like R or something similar? Good question. I also learned R, by the way, dear attendee. <laughs> so um, Felipe, would you like to answer this question? Will we learn programs like R or something similar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I don't understand the question. Can, can oh. we maybe contextualize that? So uh, the programs like um, uh, programming language like R Studio, for example, there's a programming language specifically uh, for mostly for quantitative things, I would say, or right. something like, uh, something like uh, how, how was that? Um, okay. Yeah, I think I okay. Max QDR or so, yeah. Max QDR. Yeah, this is what what we are specializing in. Um, we have um, SPSS uh, yes. lectures yes. Yes. as well. Uh, R we do not have, but we have Max QDR and SPSS okay. definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah, it's more qualitative thing. That's why it's logical to have this. One. <laughs> then uh, Sophie is smiling. I think she they have yeah. R. <laughs> yeah, I love R personally. So yeah, yes, you will definitely learn uh, programming languages like R or Stata or Python or yeah, something like that. We definitely work with that. Um, That's really great. Thank you. I like also understanding these terms because when it's different uh, subjects, webinars, very topics that I'm not that familiar with, I cannot contextualize this question that well that I can do it right now. So I'm happy for your questions, dear attendees. Uh, next question is from Maria. Uh, which university is offering full scholarship in Germany? Uh, let me first tell you regarding the scholarships in Germany. Um, Usually, when it comes to public universities, you do not usually you do not have tuition fees, so you do not have to pay anything for studies uh, per se, and that's why scholarships you can get from separate institutions like DAD, for example. As an international student, there are, there are opportunities. I also can come from non-EU country and got the DAD scholarship, which is also a good opportunity for you guys. There are also more scholarships like Deutschland Stipendium or um, yeah, pre-admission, post-admission, different scholarships like from Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, Heinrich Börsch Stiftung, et cetera, et cetera. So you can get these separate uh, scholarships. I will share the link with you right now. But before that, let me ask also our guests, maybe there are any merit-based specific scholarships uh, from your programs, uh, Felipe? We do have um, two major um, uh, scholarships at our university, HAW and QSL. Uh, and uh, students are, can apply there. Uh, it's organized within the university context. And of course, all the, uh, let's say, politically aligned uh, in, uh, scholarship um, institutions um, are, for, are available for students to apply. Um, they are the um, Stipendium des Deutschen Volkes, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And Sophie? Um, yeah, I think I have nothing to add to you. Okay. So we don't have tuition uh, fees. We just have a semester fee uh, where you also get a public transport ticket. And 
other than that, you should check out uh, DRD and, and um, institutions mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And you can check them out in the, in the link that mm -hmm. I already offered uh, in the chat, guys. Great. Uh, next question. Can uh, LLB student apply to these programs? So I think this is a related to low background. Uh, with a low background, can I apply to your programs? Uh, Sophie? I'm sorry, can you can uh, if I have a background in law discipline, uh, uh, I study international law or something like that. Uh, can law, I okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, if I'm no, no, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I totally um so so for us, um I would guess not if unless you took yeah, a large part in economics, I would say I would say no, probably not. Clear and uh, Felipe? If you have an LLB, you can apply at our uh, master programs. Okay. Also very clear and concise. Let, next question from Noemi. Uh, if I have a master already, can I apply for another one? Yeah, you can. But yeah, uh, you can. Uh, Felipe and Sophie are nodding. So yeah, you can apply. But maybe a question should be, will your master or your master grades or uh, be accounted, or they will look at your bachelor, which I think the latter is the case. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If, if it's not the case, please let me know, uh, Sophie or Philippe. If not, then we'll continue. Okay, so all is clear. <laughs> uh, can we study online? Um, yeah, please, Philippe. Uh, um... <laughs> So uh, we are um, uh, we are two master programs which um, which are not taught online in general. Um, so there is no online path. You need to be actually here in Germany. And um, but what we offer students uh, because they come from all over the world, especially with their visa processes in the beginning. I know it can be a really hard time. Uh, you don't have your visa appointment on time. We all know this. This is a really big issue. So we are uh, organizing actually two months into the semester um, or for two months in the beginning of the semester, we are doing hybrid sessions. So students who are in their country of origin and they cannot come to uh, our university, but they are enrolled, uh, have the opportunity to access the classes online. And um, with the help of our uh, online platform, our online learning platform, uh, they are included in a, in a nice and normal way. Mm -hmm. But it's not an official online path. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Thanks, Felipe. And Sophie? Um, yeah, so we do not offer, as, as Felipe as well, um, we do not offer an online track. So mm -hmm. you need to be in Germany, in Potsdam, and partake in the courses uh, in person. But again, we also have a lot of international students also from all over the world. So we are also aware of visa issues and we make it possible that you have a smooth transition um, to our studies. But yeah, in the long run, you should um, come to Germany and yeah, spend your time with us here. That's good. That's great. Actually, yeah, this uh, study online question is quite frequent after COVID started, actually. That's why this became really popular and many students ask this. But thanks for clarification and for the visa issues. For uh, You can also read our articles, by the way, uh, and there are different types of visas. And for example, check out in order not to miss your semester in Germany or not even one week, check out if there is a, a student applicant visa available in your country that might be really useful uh, so that you are get, you are in Germany on time. You can read this article also uh, on our website. Uh, next question is, what is the selection criteria for Pakistani students? I mean, the previous CGPA or what? So, okay, what are the criteria? What are the weightings? Uh, I would, this is how I would reformulate the question uh, when uh, cert, uh, when uh, getting the students onto your pro program. Um, Zofie? So we can consider um, previous grades of your bachelor degree. That's, that's one part. We don't have a specific GPA, so it depends on the cohort and on the applicants in that uh, specific year. Um, and also we consider the motivation letter and this makes uh, up 25% of the final um, the final count. So mm -hmm. those bo both of those um, yeah are weighted and then we find um, the criteria okay. at the end. yeah. And it's, it is the same basically for all students, right? Not exactly the same for yeah. for all mm -hmm. students, um, no matter what country they apply for. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Great. Uh, thank you. And Felipe? Yes, uh, we do also not discriminate um, uh, or we do not differentiate uh, whether you are coming from a certain country. So we have, uh, uh, we look at the results from UniAssist and then it's kind of translated into our requirements and uh, a GPA is an important uh, thing, but um, as is the motivation letter and um, the whole motivation of why you're going to, why you want to study. Yeah, great. That's good to know. And uh, regarding the GPA, uh, dear attendees, just in case you don't know, in Germany, the system is a bit different. So 1.0 is the highest GPA. And four if you have 4.0 in your country, which might be amazing, in Germany, it will be really bad. So don't be afraid if you see these different numbers, you can also convert your GPA using the converter that I've just linked um, in the chat. So it might be useful to locate your GPA approximately according to German standards. And last but not least, uh, question from Victor. Uh, good evening, all. I really do appreciate what you are doing. Thank you, Victor. I appreciate these words. Um, I applied for MSc Politics, Culture and Order in, at Bielefeld University for the 2022 winter session, but was rejected. I will really appreciate if I'm tutored on the reason for my rejection. This will help me a lot on my next application. Thank you. So Victor, unfortunately, I cannot tell you uh, why the rejection, ha rejection happened because you have to contact admissions office at, in Bielefeld to find out what was the problem. Was it for your background or whatever, what are the requirements? So unfortunately, I'm not the person uh, to be addressed because this is very insider issue. I would uh, suggest you to check out with them and then also keep an eye on these uh, programs, of course, because they might be also interesting for you, the ones that we have just presented. Maybe this is something yet you should, we would like to also apply because from the topics I see, it might be related. All right, so great, amazing. Uh, we cleaned up the board. Thank you very much, everyone who participated um, in our lovely Q&A session. And uh, thank you, our guests, uh, for your presentations and for answering all the questions very clearly and understandably. And yeah, uh, for attendees also for staying with us, for sending very interesting questions. Actually, these were really interesting questions. And um, if you would like to leave us feedback uh, for uh, to improve our future webinars, for example, um, you can gladly do that on our Facebook or Google pages. I put it also uh, the links in the chat where you can leave us feedback if you would like to, of course. And yeah, once again, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any general questions regarding studying in Germany, uh, get, get back to us. But if you have questions uh, related to these three programs exactly that we have presented today, the contact details we have provided and you can get back to them and uh, ask your questions. And they you can see how well they're answering your questions and clearly so uh, don't be shy and use this opportunity. With that, I would like to wish all of you a very good evening and hope to see you on our future webinars as well. Take care and bye-bye.